G'day and welcome back to our Christ the Creating King of Christmas conference. I'm Indiana Joe. We've got another live video and um, I hope you've been watching our sort of broadcast as we've been going out on YouTube and Facebook. There's been some fascinating stuff that's been going on. Uh, we've got one last big session which is going out tomorrow morning um, so that the world can catch it starting from uh, the evening time in Australia all day in the UK and going into the USA. Do, do make sure that you catch up on that. Uh, it's John Mackay speaking about stars. Okay, what is our topic today? Well, us creation research, we're very well known for fossils. Fabulous fossils like uh, this one right here. Let me hold it up to the camera for you. Um, can you see the curly whirly ammonites? Ah, this is what is known as a deathbed, a mass grave, a fossil grave, where you've got loads and loads of these fossils all buried together. But you see that little uh, brown bit at the top there? Ah, that's wood, fossil wood. You see, this is from Charmouth, and it's really not unusual to find sea creatures and land plants and land creatures all mixed together. Even dinosaurs and sea creatures buried together. Yeah, there's evidence for a worldwide flood out there, and creation research has brought you plenty of it. But one thing that we've started doing, particularly with um, our Creation Research UK Museums project, yes, we have a museums project here in the UK. We've been collecting fossils and geological specimens for sort of the last 30 years uh, here in the UK. But one thing we've started to really uh, begin to get to grips on is archaeology and history. You see, when we think of things like biblical archaeology, we tend to think of archaeology of the Bible, you know, the Holy Land, um, pottery, uh, Jericho, the walls falling down, stuff like that. Some of us, when we think of biblical archaeology, we sort of expand that to include perhaps the Assyrians and the Babylonians around the Middle East, which is part of Bible history, or maybe a little bit into Europe, where Paul went on his travels. That's Bible history as well. But you see, the reality is, um, true biblical archaeology is all of archaeology from a biblical perspective. Because think about it, um, the Bible is a history book of the world. It begins in Genesis, it ends in Revelation, it has the beginning to the end, and it has all history in there. From mankind's creation all the way through to the global flood, to the distribution of the tribes and nations and races at the time of the Tower of Babel, all over the earth. And so we've got some absolutely fabulous artefacts which help to uh, show that the Bible really can be trusted, including these ones have just come in today. I mean, have a look at that stunning pot. Um, this is an Iron Age pot from the UK. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, just before the Romans came here, some great archaeology. Here's another one. Um, Indus Valley. You see that colouring? Oh, this is real. It's uh, over 3,000 years old. It's uh, from the time just after the Tower of Babel when people had actually started to um, spread out and establish cities. Oh, we've got one last little uh, thing I'll show you before we dive into what we're dealing with for this uh, little segment. Um, I want to show you this little coin. I'm going to pop it on my hand, get the camera in nice and close so you can see it. Um, this is a fantastic little coin here. Uh, you see the other side there? You see those words? I wonder if anybody can read them. Hmm. You see, this coin is extremely important uh, and extremely valuable for proving that Jesus Christ really did come here, that Jesus Christ really did actually die on a cross, like he said, uh, and showing that the Bible's history can be trusted. What is this coin? Uh, well, if you want to find out, you'll have to join us uh, at our webinar on Friday at 6 p.m. UK, UK time, 12 p.m. USA Central time, because we're actually going to be using this coin in that webinar. All right, our topic today. Um, we've actually got another little artifact, which I'm going to get out and show you now. Um, it's a Babylonian artifact. Oh, Babylon, have you been watching uh, John Mackay's session that he did about uh, creation to Christmas? Oh, you really want to be watching tomorrow because he talks about Babylonians there as well, and he talks about stars. Um, you see this little figurine? Let me hold it up to the camera. What is this? Well, this is actually a little terracotta figurine. It's an idol, um, a Babylonian idol, of the god Marduk. Um, Marduk or Bel. You see, Bel or Baal, oh, you've heard of Baal, haven't you, or Baal? Um, the half fish god of the Philistines that plagued the children of Israel. Um, just sort of read the book of Judges. It's a depressing read, uh, but it shows you how the children of Israel would fall into idolatry, usually to Baal. Uh, they'd go into oppression, they'd repent, they'd come out of oppression, um, and they'd fall to the god Baal and go back into it again, and over and over and over again. Now, Marduk went by many different names, um, 
but uh, inclu including Baal, they all sort of interconnected these sort of Middle Eastern um, mystic gods. But this particular one, Marduk, is very special in a sense, particularly for us, because he's actually mentioned in the Bible. He's mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 50. I have my trusty Bible with me here. Um, let me read to you a little bit from Jeremiah chapter 50. Because our, our topic today that we're doing in this little segment is God above all other gods. Um, Jesus Christ above all gods, including the false god Marduk, used to be worshipped by the Babylonians. Jeremiah chapter 50. Oh, Jeremiah is the, uh, the weeping prophet. He was the prophet during the time that the children of Israel were going into captivity. Israel went into captivity into the Assyrians. Um, the, the tribe of Judah uh, went into captivity by the Babylonians. This is what Jeremiah says in uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. The word that the Lord spoke against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. And this is what he has to say. Declare among the nations, proclaim and set up a standard, proclaim and do not conceal it. Say, Babylon is taken, Bel is shamed, Marduk is broken in pieces. Her idols are humiliated, her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north a nation comes up against her, which shall make her land desolate. And no one shall dwell therein, they shall move and they shall depart, both man and beast. In those days, and in that time, says the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, with continual weeping they shall come, and seek the Lord their God. They will ask the way to Zion, with their faces towards it, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in perpetual covenant that will not be forgotten. And then it carries on talking about how the children of Israel will return to the promised land, because Babylon is destroyed. You realise that that prophecy, written hundreds of years before it actually came to pass, um, did indeed come to pass? It really did. You see, what you find, if you continue reading the Bible, and if you look through historical records, is that an army marched in, and they did smash up the false gods. The one true God who actually prophesied and promised the Babylonians that an army would come and destroy their land, that would destroy their god, that it would lay waste to it, did. That was the Medo-Persian Empire. Um, that's documented in the book of Daniel. Darius the king coming and uh, killing Belshazzar and uh, laying Babylon to waste. Hmm, it's interesting. You see, one thing's for sure, um, this is one of the gods that's mentioned by name in the Bible, and the prophecy really did come to pass, because look, it's broken to pieces. Um, it's smashed. It's not in great detail anymore. You see, this is actually just a little clay figurine. Um, that's all it is. A clay figurine that was moulded together and then somebody worshipped at one point in history. Now it's just smashed, it's broken and it sits on our shelves in the museum collection. To prove the very important point that the one true God, the one who prophesied against Babylon, the one who came down to the earth as a man, the word that became flesh, is actually the one true God and he is the God above all other gods. And what he says comes to pass. It came to pass when he prophesied through Jeremiah that Babylon would be destroyed. And it did. And the evidence is very clear today. He's also the same God who said, I'm going to send my son and I'm going to give you a string of prophecy um, to make sure that you know exactly when it is that my son comes. And you know and recognize exactly who my son is when he comes. Um, in fact, here's a, a load of details for you. Hundreds of years in advance. Hey, that's a bit what we're going to be dealing with on Friday evening. So do make sure you join us. But let's actually put this all into context for you. Because Babylon is mentioned again. It's actually mentioned again in uh, Revelation. And it's got pretty much the same type of prophecy that Jeremiah was just saying about there. Um, it's going to be destroyed. And the world, which is part of what Babylon is, represents the evilness of the world, will also be destroyed. And the king, in all of his glory, will come and will reign. And he will take and create a new heavens and a new earth. The old is passed away, um, and the former shall be no more. Make sure that you're on the side of the one true king, and not the false king like Marduk is, or was. He's now smashed. Yeah, make sure you're serving the true king, Jesus Christ.